One day, the whole world plunged into chaos. The reason for this was the evil dragon Baratius, who took over the world. People fought as best they could, but they could not defeat the villain and stopped hoping for a miracle. But at that moment, the knight Evangelina appeared. She arrived on the magic dragon Kailonos. In addition, the angel Michael appeared in support of her, who created a sword for her from the clouds of paradise. With the help of this sword, Evangelina was able to defeat the dragon demon. She cut Boratius into seven pieces. However, before dying, the dragon was able to utter a terrible curse. It said that anyone who picked up a piece of his soul would receive great power, but would be plunged into endless torment. And when all seven pieces are united, he will return to this world and destroy all living things. The holy dragon was able to prevent Baratius. He himself destroyed his soul so as not to allow evil to return. Grieving for her friend, Evangelina decided to create in his honor the Order of the Knights of Kailanos, defenders of good. Subsequently, these knights were able to create and lead to prosperity the kingdom of Kailanos, and brave Evangelina became the first queen. A joyful voice hastened to add that her name is also Evangelina. The children surrounding the girl listened attentively to the exciting story, but another interrupted her, saying that he had already heard a hundred times about the similarity of her name Ava and Evangelina. Calling the guys to go play, he added that apart from the similarity in names, the girls have nothing in common, and the storyteller does not have a guardian angel. Those who a few minutes ago had been listening to the story with their mouths open stood up in disappointment and went about their business. No matter how Eve asked them to stay, it was all in vain. She only managed to say that she was going to become a knight of Kolonos. But no one heard this. Eh, she trained so much, wanting to show off her sword skills, but not this time. Suddenly, Eve heard the sound of bells, which was different from the usual ringing. Rushing to the place where the sound came from, she exhaled with relief. Because I saw the Knights of Kolonos landing, back then, no one knew that a terrifying curse from an evil dragon was coming to the peaceful island of Deleuze. And the two of them, bearing the names of heroes from ancient legends, will have to face him, not knowing what awaits them next. In a matter of minutes, the pier became so busy that it was hardly possible to squeeze through the crowd. Everyone wanted to meet Lord Ilos and stood waiting for her to appear. Someone quickly grabbed the heroine by the hand and pulled her out of the crowd. It was the restless Solot, who was interested in why her friend was late and looked unkempt. Voices were heard greeting the Lord and congratulating her on her return. The girls, opening their mouths, also looked and admired, once again admiring her beauty and article. Here, they noticed on their armor the sign of a dragon with a sword, and guessed that these were not millet knights, but the Song Riong Spark Knights. Eva rushed as fast as she could to look for her friend Mick, but she couldn't find him anywhere and cursed that he was always gone when he was needed. On the beach, she saw girls looking towards the sea and whispering, discussing the beauty of some guy. Directing her gaze to where the attention of the others was riveted, she saw Mick emerging from the sea. Her friend was a tall, thin, blonde guy who the opposite sex was crazy about. Seeing his friend on the shore, he cheerfully patted her on the head, calling her Dottori. Without hesitation, Ava hit the guy who was laughing at her with all her might. Unable to contain her emotions, she screamed that he was missing out on all the fun, having fun and basking in female attention. Meanwhile, the Lord and Knights of Kolonos arrived to them. The young man agreed that the Song Riong Knights were not frequent guests of their island town. The girls watching from the side envied the heroine that she stood so close and communicated with the object of their admiration. The guy himself seemed to sincerely not see or understand the reason for the increased interest in his person. Having again patted his girlfriend, who was full of emotions on the head, he asked Dottori if she really thought he was cool, to which she was only once again indignant at being called that by her. Mickey laughed and said that he had a couple of acorns that he could share with her, which made the girl even angrier. Besides the fact that she hated being called Dorothy, she was also irritated by the fact that Mikael was not impressed by the fact that they had the opportunity to go to a meeting of the Order in the cathedral. Ava shouted that in his place, she would have long ago become a knight of Kolonos, but the guy only smiled and said that he did not like to work. Having spent all her arguments, the girl sadly asked why he was studying fencing if he didn't want anything, 
to which the guy looked into her eyes and replied that only because she asked him to study with her. The girl pulled him back, urging him to stop acting like a sly fox. This left Mickey in sincere surprise. Seeing the misunderstanding in his eyes, Ava said that Salat says this at moments when he smiles with his eyes, and if there were any other girl in her place, she would think that he was flirting with her, but she doesn't think so only thanks to because they have been friends for a long time. The guy laughed again and asked in a friendly manner what he should do with this naughty acorn. It turns out that Dorothy means acorn. As he left, he also laughed good-naturedly and said that he had gathered many of her brothers in the alley and let her not forget them. With this joke, Mickey completely angered his good old friend. Children ran around on the street, imagining themselves as knights and heroes. Ava, sitting in a cafe with a friend, watched them and did not understand why even children wanted to become knights. But Mikkel did not. She was upset that he used to listen to her, but now he had become a fox to the core. Salau jumped up and pointed her finger into the distance, looking in this direction. The girl saw her friend, whom she had just been talking about. The guy, noticing them again, smiling slyly, called Eva by her annoying name. And of course, he got exactly the reaction he expected. And a friend, looking at him, asked if Dorothy really didn't see happiness in his face, to which she heard in response that he always glows with happiness whenever she meets him. Apparently, it's all because of his fans. Adding that today, at a meeting, she told him everything about the fact that he is a womanizer and a cunning fox. The already emotional Salat jumped up, wanting to know what exactly her friend said to Mickey, hearing that she told him that he had a look like a sly fox, and that in her place any other girl would consider this look as flirting. Her friend swore, calling her a fool. Eva, who did not expect such a reaction, began to say that she was not a fool, and there was no need to call her that. But in response, she heard that Mikkel only makes such a face when he is next to her. From surprise, the heroine was speechless and did not understand what her friend was driving at. But she explained that Mick doesn't like Eva as a friend. The color of embarrassment flooded her face, and the girl could not make out what feelings she was experiencing at that moment. She remembered his image and could not believe what she heard. Not understanding who she wanted to convince herself or her friend more, the heroine began to say that all this was probably a joke, because someone like her could not please Mikkel, but was interrupted by a gesture indicating to remain silent. Seconds later, she already felt someone's hand on her confused face. Turning around, I saw the one they were just talking about. The guy was cheerful as always, smiling from ear to ear, asking what they were talking about. Salah hastened to assure that it was nothing important, just about her own girlish things, and Eva was ready to fall through the earth from the recent discovery. There was nothing unusual in Mick's behavior. As before, he did not miss the opportunity to tease Dorothy, saying that he had collected her brothers along with the apples and offered to share, which, as expected, infuriated the girl. But every time her reaction only made him laugh. He patted her kindly on the head, continuing to joke, and their mutual friend watched them, and she had no doubt about the correctness of her guess. The cheerful young man said goodbye, saying not to stay up too late and waving his hand, he left. As soon as the guy was out of sight, Salat hurried to tell her friend that Mika was again making a fox face, looking at Eva. The heroine began to prove something, but the interlocutor immediately interrupted her with her questions and arguments for each of which Dorothy's memories surfaced. When asked if she had ever seen Mickey worry so much about anyone else, she had a picture of him carefully bandaging her hands before training. Did she ever see him care about someone like that? She remembered that he always tried to feed her something and look after her. And whether he was so happy next to someone else besides her, she also has something to remember. Summing up, Salat made a verdict that for now the guy is just playing with his eyes, but is not doing anything else. But it is not known how long these games will last. Ava, still not wanting to admit the fact that Mika liked her, became completely angry, hit the table with her fist, and began shouting that they had simply known each other since the orphanage and were friends. Seeing such a reaction, Salat asked why the girl did not want to go beyond friendship. Because no matter how many nights there were, 
it would be difficult to find someone like Mickey. A friend urged the girl to think about it, because in addition to the fact that the young man is handsome, no matter what, he always supports and helps her like no one else. Dorothy remembered their conversation today, in which he admitted that he was engaged in fencing only because she asked about it. It seems that something began to take shape in her head. Seeing the confusion and confusion on Ava's face, Salat advised her to listen to her heart. The fencing lesson arrived, where the heroine always practiced with pleasure and did well, but not this time, when my arms and legs refused to obey. She couldn't concentrate because of what her friend had said recently. When the lesson was over, the guy said that the Lord wanted to see her. Ava asked in surprise why the Lord might be interested in her, but the young man himself didn't know for sure, suggesting that it had to do with the Order of Knights, which completely delighted the girl who dreams of joining their ranks. She rushed headlong towards her dream. Seeing no one in her way, she ran as fast as she could. Of course, she wanted to become a knight, but on the other hand, she still had so much to learn and learn. And here she is at the castle door, just a few steps separate her from an important meeting. Taking a breath, reassuring herself that she had been giving it her all in fencing lessons all this time, she opened the door. In front of her stood a beautiful, stately woman in uniform. Eve bowed and came closer, saying that it was a great honor for her to meet the Lord again. In response, the female idol said that they had not seen each other for a long time and invited the girl to sit down. Looking around, the heroine asked if the captain of the knights was here. Her question remained unanswered. The Lord thoughtfully poured tea for herself and her guest. To break the impending silence, Eve sympathetically said that the Lord must be tired because she had just arrived and was already working. In response, she heard that she should not take it into her head, especially since the girl has grown up and there are fewer worries. Eva happily nodded her head and took the opportunity to thank her for building the shelter. Otherwise, she would not be sitting here now. Looking at the young heroine, the Lord asked how old she was. Dorothy was no less than 17 years old. The master, looking back, continued her speech about how at her age she dreamed that the world would become a much better place. Listening to every word with interest, the girl did not yet understand where the conversation was heading. Sorrow appeared on the Lord's face. She said that the knights still had a lot of problems, because coping with the magicians who had absorbed the fragments of the evil dragon was a thorny path. Eve believed that as long as the knights of Kailanos fought for them, no curse was scary. But everything turned out to be not as rosy as it might have seemed from the outside, as the girl was now learning about. There was so much pain in the eyes of the woman who always seemed unapproachable. Her voice trembled, but she continued to say that hundreds of innocents die every day. They have already sacrificed too much. She turned and addressed the sitting girl, saying that she knew about her desire to become a knight of Kailanos in the future and go to defend the world, and that the girl probably considered the arrival of the knights to their island as an excellent opportunity to go with them. Eve admitted that she had thought about it. In response, she heard a soft and caring voice saying that it was too early for her. The heroine didn't understand why it was early. Was she so untalented that if she trained every single day, she still wouldn't become a knight? The Lord still carefully explained that it was not a matter of mediocrity, but that she was simply too young and she was afraid to take her into that terrible world. Dorothy experienced mixed feelings. On the one hand, she was caring, but on the other, it seemed to her that her dream was crumbling. Having apologized, the Lord said that the girl was not allowed to go there. Ava scolded herself, calling herself a naive fool, hoping to receive the title of knight. Remembering that Mikkel had already been given a sword, she became even more discordant in her emotions, saying that it was not a matter of age, but that she was simply considered too weak, and therefore she could not receive her sword. She swore that she could handle it, that she would train long and hard for as long as it took to ensure that no one could doubt her strength. She screamed that she would eventually become a knight and save the world, just as her mother wanted. The Lord listened to the fragile but determined girl who did not want to give up on her dream, adding that if she was not accepted into the order of Kailanos, she was ready to become a simple warrior to save people. Not understanding how else to convince Ava, the woman raised her voice, hoping that they would hear her. 
and said that the girl did not even know how often such simple warriors were sent to certain death even before they had time to save someone. Having listened to the end, the heroine persistently continued that in this case, she will become a knight of Kailanos, no matter with or without the help of the Lord. She is not going to retreat from danger on the way to her goal. Captivated by a heated conversation, the ladies heard a man's voice praising the girl for her courage. The person who had just entered apologized for being late and introduced himself as Juvelius de Morgan. He was the vice captain of the Song Riong Spark Knights, the third division of the Knights of the Great Kingdom of Kailanos. Then he turned to Eve, saying that he wanted to make sure of the firmness of her intentions. The master was clearly not happy with what was happening. The same cannot be said about the main character, who, when asked by Juelius, who was interested in her name, without hesitation, reported that her name was Evangelina Delus. De Morgan suggested testing her strength. The girl, with her mouth open, listened to every word the man said and waited for him to announce exactly how he was going to do it. The Lord, who still feared for the young lady, asked the vice captain what he was up to. He explained his position that if Evangelina has talent, then it would be wrong to just leave her like that, and therefore invites her to come to the competition tomorrow to recruit new knights, where if she loses, she will never bother their captain again and will leave the idea of knighthood. Eva accepted all the conditions and, bowing at her feet, sincerely thanked Sir Juilius for the opportunity. Running away, she joyfully shouted to the remaining adults in the office that she would not let them down. For some time, they stood dumbfounded by the girl's energy. The Lord still did not approve of the actions of her deputy, but he replied that this child's dream should not be rejected like that. Not everyone is so eager to become knights of Kailanos. Unable to contain her emotions, the captain bitterly said that protecting the children on these lands was her direct task. Sir de Morgan knew that the captain had a lot of trouble, so he thanked her for the help she provided to their squad. He added that he understands very well how out of place the things they brought with them are on the island. In response, he heard that the problem was not the thing, but human greed. The vice captain promised to leave the island as soon as all preparations were completed. The woman prayed that nothing would happen before then. Only the power of the endless ocean temporarily weakens the influence of the fragment, so let it be stored on Delos Island as long as possible. All her life, the Lord lived side by side with danger, and so did Eve. Let everything be okay this time. The library was full of people. The bulk of them were girls who were not taking their eyes off the handsome blonde. He, completely unaware of this, recalled the words of his girlfriend that they had the opportunity to join the Order of Knights. With her, Mickey was ready for anything. Noticing a crowd of girls coming out, a friend approached Grind and said that since Mikkel began working in the library, it has become incredibly popular. He also told the unsuspecting Mickey about Eva, who went to a meeting with the master, and perhaps she would join the Order of Knights. The news shocked the young man. He became agitated and tried to find out the details. He told about tomorrow's competition in which the girl plans to take part. Does she really dream so much of joining the ranks of the knights that she will go there tomorrow? Their mutual friend, although he didn't believe in the girl's victory, still admitted that anything could happen. Initially worried, Mick was sure that the Lord would never send the acorn girl to such a dangerous place, which means that Eva will remain here forever. Dottori trained even harder than usual. She tried to spend every minute usefully. But Salat's incessant voice, telling her that Mikael liked her, did not allow her to concentrate. Turning to herself, she asked her to calm down and stop thinking about it for now. But again and again, her thoughts returned to the guy. And now she remembered how, during another training session, Mika brought her a sword, saying that the real one was too heavy and inconvenient for practicing skills, and therefore, he made a special one for her. He carefully placed the gift he had made with his own hands into her hands. It was this sword that she is currently training with that was given to her by a faithful friend. She also remembered the moment when he was just teaching her how to hold a weapon correctly. So many good things in her life have been associated with this guy, and she can't help but think about him. Looking up, she found him right in front of her. Mick sat down and, as usual, patted the girl on the head, as happened when they met. She looked up at him with her sincere, tear-filled eyes 
and asked if he really liked her. He smiled in response, calling her silly Dorothy. Suddenly, the place where the guy had just stood was empty, and Eva continued to scold herself for the fact that all her thoughts are now only about him. He even seems to her where he is not, and she cannot concentrate now on anything else. Fearing that all this uncertainty might prevent her from winning the competition, she was determined to talk to Mikkel today. But what exactly should she talk to him about? Obviously, you need to ask if he really likes her. If the answer is yes, then ask why. But it may be that he will answer no, and then what should she do? Feeling a little sad at the last thought, she immediately switched gears, convincing herself that it would be even better. Then she could immediately train calmly. So, in thought, she reached Mika's house. And it's unclear what to do next. She can't knock on the door and ask the question that worries her. She scolded herself for coming here and not knowing what to do next. Then the door opened, and Dorothy, who was sitting with her elbows on it, began to fall rapidly. As always, the same faithful friend was nearby. He caught her on the fly, preventing her from falling. At first he asked what brought her to him for the night. But sensing the scent of perfume from her, inhaling with pleasure, he asked why she had put on perfume today. Eva immediately pushed the guy away and began to deny the use of perfume, saying that she had just washed herself. Smiling, Mickey calmly replied, It means she just smells great, as always. Seeing the fox's gaze again, the girl, not knowing how to behave, decided to start complaining about the fact that she was being kept on the threshold despite the cold. And belligerently pushing the young man aside, she walked into the house with swift steps. After catching her breath a little, Ava said that she liked the vice captain of the knights, Sun Ryong, and if everything went well, then she would be able to go with them. And considering that the master has already given Mikkel her own sword, he also has a pass to the Order of Knights, and she would like them to go there together. Her proposal was met with silence, and then he asked if her proposal was related to what Salat said. It turns out that Mikkel heard their conversation and already knew about everything. Previously, Mick, always smiling, today was serious. Eva had never seen him like this. He asked why she decided that he would agree to go with her. Was it because he liked her? The girl began to shake her head negatively and explained that it was just a thought that it would be nice for them to become knights together. The guy softened, saying that he didn't mind going to defend the world, but only for her sake. And she, most likely, was just mocking him and was not going to sail away anywhere. Outraged by this assumption, the heroine shouted that she really wanted them to be together. If so, Mickey seemed to want to check the veracity of the girl's words and asked if he could kiss her. His question came extremely unexpectedly for Eva. Looking carefully at Mikkel, she was aware that he was different from other guys. He was smart, kind, handsome. It seemed that he had no flaws. Evangelina nodded her head affirmatively, which surprised the touched young man. He carefully and tenderly hugged her and kissed the one with whom he had been in love for so long and deeply. The knight remembered the words that were spoken to him so that he would never remember this thing again. But having found the treasured box, he began to laugh loudly. As if enchanted, he insisted that he no longer needed the surname Morgan. Instead, he wanted to gain great power. Grabbing the desired item, he rushed to run in the darkness, but tripped over a stone, fell, and dropped the precious burden. Fearing that someone before him would be able to use the power hidden inside, he found a healthy cobblestone and broke the box. After the first kiss, Eva asked in bewilderment if that was all, which made Mickey laugh a lot. He asked if maybe she wanted to continue or what didn't suit her. The girl tried to object, but the young man, without letting her finish, kissed her passionately again. And now they were already alone in his bed. But Eva began to say that friends could not do this. Miko suggested that they stop being friends and become a couple. At that moment, it seemed to them that there were no happier people in the world than them. Suddenly, they were blinded by a bright light coming from the window. The guy immediately asked if everything was okay with his now girlfriend. She, looking out the window in amazement, did not understand what this unbearably bright light was. Peering, he quietly said that this was the curse of the dragon. Hearing about the curse of the dragon demon, Eve rushed outside. Grabbing his sword, Mick rushed after her. Something terrible and incomprehensible was happening around. 
Trying to understand, the girl rushed towards the blazing fire, but was held back by Miko's strong hand. She said that they could not just stand, otherwise the inhabitants of the island would be in danger. The main character tried to reason with the selfless girl. He said that she didn't even have a sword. She couldn't help. If this is truly the dragon's curse, then they can't do anything alone, so the girl must run to the knights and tell them everything. Agreeing with him, Evangelina ran to the castle, promising Mikael to return. Mick went in the direction where the brightest light came from. He saw the knight who was hit by the beam, but in the darkness he doubted. Drawing his sword, he walked closer to the man who was kneeling, covering his face with his hands. By that time, Eva had reached the castle gates and saw that the square was busy, despite such a late hour. All the knights were assembled, led by the Lord. Seeing them, Evangelina started babbling that there, on the hill near Mikkel's house, the fire of the curse broke out. The vice captain announced an urgent general muster, ordering everyone to move to the hill above the village. The knights saddled their horses and got ready to set off, ordering Eve to stay here. The brave girl begged the captain, persuading him to take her with him, because she promised Mick to return. The Lord understood that Evangelina would not stay here to wait for the others, and therefore sat her next to her. On command, a squad of knights rushed to their destination. Having made sure that there really was a knight in front of him, Mickey asked if everything was okay with him. At that moment, a flame of fire burst out of the box, from which a fiery dragon head emerged. The fire hit the guy standing next to him. He fell to the ground and, looking at his damaged hands, did not want to believe what was happening. Remembering his beloved, who asked him to wait for her, he was glad that at least she managed to escape. Mikael tried his best to fulfill Eva's request and waited for her, but feeling that his strength was leaving him, he mentally asked for forgiveness from his beloved for not waiting. He lay surrounded by flames, unconscious. The squad arrived at Mick's house, but the entire neighborhood was already on fire. Rushing at full speed, Evangelina noticed Mikkel's sword on the ground. She realized that since the weapon was lying on the ground without its owner, it meant that something had happened to her friend. Without hesitation, she jumped off the horse and started running in search of her beloved. The girl ran, not paying attention to the elder's words to return, warning her against danger. The only thing she was thinking about at that moment was how to find Mick as quickly as possible and not be late. And so, she saw the immobilized body of a young man on the ground. Neither the fire burning around, nor the screams of the Lord, nor the knowledge that it was dangerous there could stop the girl. She rushed towards him, but the bright hot tongues of flame viciously did not allow him to pass, burning her from all sides. There was a short distance to Mikkel's body, but it was incredibly difficult to overcome this section. As she approached, she could already see his face, and it became unbearable for her to think how scared and painful he was alone. She sobbed loudly, but nothing could bring back the person dear to her. Wanting to stay next to Mick at least for a while, she lay down next to him. Taking his hand, she continued to lie next to her beloved and did not pay attention to the fire burning around her. The knights arrived after the girl, but by that time the fire had disappeared, as if it had never existed, and they saw the guy lying down and Eve crying over him. Always strong and persistent, Evangelina could not hold back her tears and pain. She recalled how happy they were that evening, confessing their feelings to each other and making plans for the future. The Lord did not leave the bed of the girl, who was unconscious for a minute. The vice captain, who had seen a lot in his life, also could not remain indifferent to what happened to the fragile but so brave girl and her boyfriend. The master, without turning around, asked if he knew what happens to children whose parents burn alive in such fires. But seeing that Morgan could not answer, she continued that these children are simply forgotten. Everyone is only interested in finding the fragments and neutralizing their power, and no one cares about the mass of orphaned children whose parents died in the process. And it is these children who end up in an orphanage on this island. No matter how De Morgan apologized, saying that they did not foresee this, nothing could soften the female captain. She was upset by how simply the lives of people and children were perceived in pursuit of the main goal. But Evangelina is not an ordinary girl. She is the one who pierced the hearts of everyone on this island with her love and kindness. 
the knight continued to apologize, but looking at him, it was obvious that he still failed to understand and feel the full depth and meaning. And therefore the Lord, unable to contain his emotions, slapped his interlocutor in the face, calling him a spineless slobber and saying that it was all his fault. Obviously not expecting this, the man promised that he would atone for his guilt and was ready to do anything for this. To the captain's direct question whether he was ready to lie to his master Rachidel, he answered in the affirmative. Then she ordered not to tell anyone about Evangelina. According to their version, it should be that only Mikkel was in the cursed fire. Seeing the confusion on the vice captain's face, she dryly said that this was an order and it was not discussed. Opening the door and making it clear that their conversation was over, the Lord added that her deputy was also obliged to force all the other knights to remain silent about what had happened. Aware of his guilt, but not approving of the order, Morgan left. The woman returned to the bed, where Eva was still lying unconscious, and continued to sit next to her. Looking out the window, she quietly said that she had kept her promise, addressing a certain Reynola. Lord Ilos plunged into memories, Seventeen years ago on this very island of Deleuze, young girls in uniform received the next ship. Many people came out of it onto the pier. All of them were refugees whom Ilosa was ready to accept onto the island. Even then, despite her young age, she was responsible and tried to serve the world. She got this island after Darian's death, but she decided that Delis is not her property, but her duty. And now that she has knowledge and time, she must devote her life to others. Suddenly, a loud cry of a child was heard, and the girls turned around and saw a young lady with a child in her arms who got off the ship. The child screamed at the top of his lungs, blushing from pain, and nothing could calm him down. Ilosa came up and took the fluffy, soft, crying bundle. The mother screamed and demanded that her daughter be returned to her, saying that they had no right to take her child away from her. But then she heard that the crying was replaced by the ringing laughter of her baby, and the girl holding the child in her arms was gentle and caring. The young mother realized that they did not wish harm to her and her daughter, and therefore, tired, she sat down on the ground in front of the Lord. The girls came to the castle. The captain looked intently at the new arrival, and she, in turn, did not dare to raise her eyes. Breaking the silence, the master reproached Reynola for the fact that the knight who betrayed her homeland dared to come here. The young woman began to object with bitterness, saying that she did not want to betray anyone and run away. Just a lot of events happened, and she made a mistake. The knight listened carefully and watched the girl. She believed in her sincere repentance. Reynola shared her fear that if someone found out about her being here with her daughter, trouble might start. Ilosa came closer and asked why, if she really wanted to protect her daughter, she continued to behave so carelessly. She encouraged her to be strong for the sake of the child. The girl realized everything and begged to be accepted. She promised that if she received help, she would definitely change and devote her life to her daughter. The master was afraid of a rebellion on the island, but at the same time she understood that the future of these two people depended on her, so she promised to help but on one condition. Renola had hope and said without a doubt that she agreed to everything. The girl had to promise the Lord that no one should ever know that she was a knight, not even her daughter. In turn, she promised to protect her child with all her might if the former kept her word. Renola kept her promise to the end, and Ilosa kept hers. Eve, being unconscious, saw the image of her mother, who walked into the distance, leaving her. She ran after her, stretched out her arms, but her mother only moved away. Gradually, her image began to crumble and disappear. The terrible footage gave way to others in which she found Mick and begged him to come to his senses and leave from there. Suddenly, he opened his eyes and looked at her. At that moment, shouting his name, Evangelina woke up. The Lord, who was leaving to fetch water for a compress, frightenedly hurried to the victim. Seeing the woman, Ava excitedly asked where Mikael was and if he was alive. Silently, Ilosa hugged the girl tightly. Taking this as bad news, the girl's eyes filled with tears. She clung to the woman who had always been kind to her and apologetically asked not to leave her. Feeling and sharing all of Eva's pain, the master reassured her, saying that the brave girl was not to blame for anything. And then looking straight into her eyes, she told her that Mikkel was alive. 
Despite her physical weakness, Evangelina jumped out of bed, and now they were already standing at the door of the bedroom where Mick was now. Remembering how she found him lying on the ground in the flames, she understood that he was probably completely burned. Taking a breath, the heroine slowly reached towards the door. Before approaching the bed, she promised herself to love him no matter what the fire turned him into. With her eyes closed, Ava came close to her lover's bed. She was scared of what she was about to see. The Lord was nearby all this time, supporting the poor girl. She asked her to be brave. The girl opened her eyes and looked at the lying guy. Her gaze fell on his face, which still had the same beautiful, thick eyebrows, and his blonde hair also looked as usual. She didn't understand how this could happen. Unable to figure it out, she rushed to the woman, asking how he didn't burn, because she saw him on fire with her own eyes. The magister explained that this was not an ordinary fire. The flame took energy from a cursed magical artifact. With the help of waterbenders, they managed to stabilize the fire energy inside him. Listening to the story, Ava could not believe what was happening. She thought that she had lost Mikkel forever. Tears flowed from her eyes again, but now they were tears of joy that her loved one was alive. The Lord continued, saying that he was not physically injured at all, but they would be keeping an eye on him. At the head of the bed stood the sword of Mika, handed to him personally by the master. Taking the sword in her hands, the heroine remembered her friend, who was always ready to face danger. She could not forgive herself for leaving him alone. Now she does not intend to leave him. Touching his head, Eve noted that the heat was still lingering. She lay down next to him, not taking her eyes off, looking at him, waiting for him to finally wake up. She stayed next to her lover all night without sleeping a wink. But as soon as it blossomed, the girl, not noticing anyone on her way, quickly ran somewhere. A few minutes later, she was already in the library, enthusiastically choosing a book to read to Mikael. Having found a suitable one, she wasted no time and ran back. Rushing into Mick's chambers, trying to catch her breath, she heard a voice. Her lover was sitting on the bed and smiling as usual. He made fun of the out-of-breath girl, saying that long before she appeared, he had heard her running at breakneck speed. This time, Ava was not angered by his banter. When she approached him, she said how scared she was when she thought that they would never see each other again. The guy tried to laugh it off. He smiled and said how cute it was. He carefully wiped the tears from her face. But the girl could not calm down. She threw herself on his neck and continued to cry, hugging him tightly. Mick gently pressed the girl, always so strong and independent. Now she was so vulnerable. Suddenly, she spoke in a serious tone, saying that she would not be able to go anywhere now, as they had planned, because something had happened, and they would not let her go. Not expecting such a turn, the young man became sad, and to support him, Ava laughed cheerfully, patted him on the shoulder and asked him to make his facial expression more cheerful, because life was not over yet. Now, Mikkel took the floor. He said that he had changed his mind and was going to sail to the capital. The girl's surprise knew no bounds. Mick said that the knights would soon sail away, and he was going with them, where he would be initiated into the order. How is it that the one who never wanted to be a knight changed his mind now that she cannot sail with him, as she previously dreamed of. Mikkel has already been given his own sword, but no one knows when Eve will be able to receive her weapon and join them. The guy admitted that he would like his beloved to run away with him. Unable to hide her feelings, the girl quietly asked if he would leave if she stayed on the island, to which I received an affirmative answer. The heroine returned to her bedroom, where she had been after the incident, and began to pack her things, which is exactly what the Lord found her doing. The woman urged not to rush, convinced that everything has its time and life goes on. Not wanting to upset the master, who was so kind to her, Ava said that everything was fine. She understood that Mikkel was talented and had the right to sail to the city. But why then, understanding all this, she could not sincerely congratulate him? This question asked the girl, who again had tears in her eyes. The answer was obvious. She did not want to part with him. She was afraid that they would never see each other again. Hoping that Evangelina would change her mind, the Lord once again asked if she had definitely decided and was ready to return home. Smiling, the girl said that she had decided everything for herself. 
Then the captain became serious and asked if Ava remembered their conversation. The heroine quickly started chattering, retelling the story they had come up with for the others, which said that that evening one of the knights accidentally set fire to gunpowder and an explosion occurred, and Mikkel tried to stop the fire and was badly injured, so he sailed away for treatment. Becoming even more strict, Ilosa said that the girl had forgotten the most important thing, never to tell the truth to Salat. Saying goodbye, the master asked her ward to rest more and not to overdo it with training until she had fully recovered. At the same time, Mick recalled their recent conversation with the Lord, from which he learned the terrible thing that it is almost impossible to get rid of this curse. He refused to believe it, pointed at himself and said that he was completely normal. Remaining calm, the woman said that she too would have thought the same as him if she had not experienced the curse herself, and therefore she was sure that not everything was all right with him. The guy heard about this for the first time and asked to tell me more. Lord Ilosa told how many years ago, her husband Darian, who was the previous master, died from the same curse, and to this day no one knows the details of his death. He was cursed by the same dragon. At first everything was fine. The fragment of the dragon's soul was hidden on their island. But when the seal of the curse was broken, Ilosa's husband was consumed by the curse of the evil dragon. At first she believed that his salvation was a miracle, because he came out of the fire completely healthy and unharmed, which made his wife incredibly happy. But everything turned out to be not so happy, and a little later the curse began to take effect. He had to go to the capital for treatment, and upon his return he was already dead. Mikkel, after listening to the sad story, began to shout that it turned out that he would also die. The master tried to be convincing, saying that if he undergoes treatment in the city, then everything will be fine. The guy did not believe in a happy outcome, and therefore he shouted, wondering where the Lord got such confidence from if her husband died anyway. The woman understood the young man's feelings well. She could not force him to leave, but she also could not afford to endanger the residents of Deleuze. And then, looking him straight in the eyes, she asked if he really wanted to stay and endanger the entire island because no one could control him here. He remembered Eva, who was the most dear person to him. For her sake, he was ready to leave. Ilosa said that almost 20 years have passed since the death of her husband. Medicine began to study the curse and treat it, so there is a chance of recovery. Mikkel agreed to go to the capital, but on the condition that Eve would not find out that he had turned into a monster. He asked to keep this a secret until he was cured and returned back to a normal person. The memories made him feel unbearably painful. He jumped up and broke a vase of flowers standing on the nightstand. The hero did not recognize himself. As if not noticing the fragments, he crawled along the floor, cutting his legs into blood. Over and over again, he asked Eve to forgive him. He pounded the glass with his fists, inflicting wounds on himself, but no physical pain could compare with what was now happening in his soul. Ilosa and her assistants came running at the noise. Mikael shouted that they had better kill him, because if they couldn't help in the capital, he would turn into a monster. He said that he would rather die than have Eve see him as a monster. As soon as Vice Captain de Morgan arrived, the Lord ordered the young man to be urgently taken away from the island. Despite the master's request to take care of herself until recovery, Evangelina trained without sparing herself. She had to receive the order as quickly as possible and join Mick. Salo, who was watching from the sidelines, brought her friend water so that she would not lose consciousness in the heat. Having quenched her thirst with pleasure, Ava looked at the girl who had not approached and realized that she had come for a reason. Salo reported the news that she learned about from a friend that tomorrow Mikael and the knights are sailing away. Of course, the heroine knew about her friend's departure, but did not expect it to happen so soon. Looking at the upset Eva, the friend asked if she would go to see Mick off. The main character decided not to go, for fear of not being able to restrain herself at the meeting. She brushed away her tears and cheerfully said that they would see each other soon, because she planned to become a knight herself in the near future and sail to the city. The morning of the next day came, and the ship, as well as its passengers, was already ready to depart. Despite Eva's words, Salat was still sure that the girl would come to say goodbye to her best friend. The Lord suggested that Mikkel should already go to the ship. The friend who saw him off wished him to return quickly, 
being the coolest knight of Kailanos. The master blessed him and said that everything further would depend on him. Trying not to show his pain and sadness, Mick headed towards the ship, turning for the last time to those remaining on the pier. Taking his things, he continued on his way with a decisive step. Suddenly, someone grabbed his hand. He turned around and saw Eve. Sweat poured from her face. She ran so hard and fast, afraid of being late. Mick, having lost all hope of seeing each other again, only said quietly that he was sure that Dorothy had decided to leave him without goodbye, after which he silently went to the ship. Standing on the deck of the departing ship, Mikkel heard Evangelina shouting to him so that he would not think of returning here. He was confused, not understanding why she did this. But then he heard more words in which she swore to become a knight and find him in the city so that he would not have the thought of returning back to the island. Looking at the receding ship, the brave girl prayed only that Mick would wait for her. Three years have passed since the ship with the knights and Mikkel set sail from Deleuze Island. Ava remained the same kind, nimble and cheerful. She never refused people when they approached her. And now, carrying a cake and flowers to the castle at the request of the workers, she walked across the square and all the way heard the sound of acorns falling to the ground. Remembering her friend, she mentally told him that the whole island was looking forward to Evangelina's upcoming holiday. All the people of the island came to congratulate her. There was so much trouble. There was no time to even sit down. Salat was rushing towards her in festive attire. She twirled in front of the heroine, asking how her friend's outfit was. Eva was angry that even her friend was interfering and distracting her. The elegant girl did not give up, shouting after the departing Dorothy. She said that she should come to the festival because her first official appearance with Jude, who is the cousin of the head of the city, would take place there. Seeing that the interlocutor did not react in any way to her words, she still continued that Eva simply had to be next to her and constantly talk about the beauty of Salat in front of her boyfriend. On Dorothy's table, there was a filled bowl of acorns. With the help of them, it was as if she had an invisible connection with Mick. Finally finding herself at home in silence, the girl had the opportunity to write a letter to a dear person. With all her heart, she missed Mikael. She was wondering how his fate had turned out. But today, she decided that this letter would be the last. Ava sent him many letters, but she did not receive an answer to any of them. In this last message, she said goodbye to him, wishing him happiness and adding that she was really looking forward to their next meeting. Having put the letter in the mailbox, the girl went on to complete her tasks. The master, seeing her, noted that she, as always, works harder than anyone else. After which, she changed the topic and asked if it was true that Evangelina was going to the capital in the spring, to which I received an affirmative answer. Without looking up from her work, Ilosa, with kindness in her voice, said that if Ava decided on something, then nothing could stop her, not even the absence of a sword. Feigning thoughtfulness, the Lord quietly said that it was a pity, because besides Evangelina, there were no suitable candidates to receive the sword that he planned to hand over. Dropping a bouquet of yellow roses in surprise, the girl asked if they really wanted to give her the long-awaited sword, and without waiting for an answer, she rushed to hug her patroness. When the happy heroine released the woman from her embrace, she said that the weapon would be ready for winter, so in the spring Eve could take it to the city. Dorothy laughed and did not stop thanking the Lord. The happy girl ran to her teacher, who, by the way, was also named Eva. She was eager to tell her about the most important news. Smiling mysteriously, the teacher said that she would probably go to the capital with Gideon, and that was so sweet. The main character in emotion loudly asked where the idea came from that they should go together. Seeing that the namesake did not understand the hints, the teacher asked what Eva thought why the guy stayed until the night and helped Dorothy with training, to which she received the interlocutor's assumption that he did this out of his kindness. The one they were talking about came up and asked if Eva was going to the square at night. Having said that he had an appointment there, he offered to go together. The mentor, giggling, pushed the girl and turned to the guy, saying that he was on time and it would be great if he accompanied Eva. The young man was a little surprised to learn that the main character was also named Eva, like his colleague. The guy had to wait while Evangelina changed clothes for the holiday. She apologized for keeping him waiting. 
but Gideon, looking at his companion with admiration, politely replied that it was nothing to worry about. Eva was a little embarrassed and, having said that she had found such a dress, asked if she looked okay in it, and hearing that she was incredibly beautiful, she became even more embarrassed. On the way, the guy timidly turned to the girl, wondering if she would like to dance with him today. Captivated by the conversation, they did not notice the observer who was watching them from around the corner. Ava asked for forgiveness, saying that she had planned to just take a walk today. Having accepted the refusal with dignity, the young man asked whether Mikkel was one of the reasons for her refusal and trip to the city. The girl did not deny this fact, but added that she was going there not only because of Mick. Gideon really liked this kind girl, but seeing her serious attitude towards Mikael, he decided to help and expressed his opinion that, probably, she should not go to the capital in search of a friend, but to his hometown. The heroine could not grasp the essence that they were trying to convey to her. Therefore, the young man continued, his idea was that the guy does not answer letters because he is not physically where they come, and logically, he could be in his hometown. Otherwise, where else could he be? From this assumption, the girl began to hope that dear Mick had not forgotten her, but simply had not received news from her, and therefore did not answer her. She was happy like a child, thanking her fellow traveler. Looking at the happy Eve, Gideon was also glad that he could help her. There was a celebration going on in the square. People were listening to music and dancing. Eve was in her thoughts when she heard a song that the children sang while playing knights. The song talked about Evangelina, who fought an evil dragon, and Mikael created her a sword from the heavenly clouds with which she pierced the heart of the dragon, and now peace reigns on the Holy Land. Her calm and tranquility was interrupted by Salat, who loudly called on everyone to congratulate her friend on the fact that she would receive a sword from the master. Despite the fact that Eva had long known about the girl's ability to find out and spread news before anyone else, it still surprised her every time. The eccentric Salat gave advice so that the future knight Evangelina should stop waiting for this brainless Mikkel and start meeting pretty knights in the capital. Eva felt sad from such conversations. To diffuse the situation, the chatterbox casually began to say that although Mick was handsome, no one remembered what he was like, blonde or brunette, and they couldn't even remember the color of his eyes. Interrupting her interlocutor's monologue, the main character, without thinking for a minute, said that he was blonde and his eyes were the color of azure. Her gaze became soft from the memory of her beloved. The celebration was interrupted by a loud sound, similar to thunder, but much stronger. Eve looked at the fiery peals above the castle and remembered that that evening there was the same light. Not fully understanding what was happening, she ran for her sword just in case. Quickly changing clothes and taking her weapon, the girl ran back. Along the way, she saw pools of blood and then an excited mentor who ran to meet her. She told that the magician had sent a curse on them. However, Eve understood that this was not just a curse. They were being attacked. One moment and the island from the holiday plunged into darkness. People died one after another. Gideon was also in a hurry with bad news. He reported that the monsters and night hunters that the magicians should meet were approaching the city walls. Hearing such news, the main character was worried about the master, whether everything was okay with her. Eve calmed her down and said that the Lord was waiting for them to say something important, so they needed to hurry to the tower. The entire path was paved with dead soldiers. The enemy was already in full control of the castle. The sound of a bell was heard throughout the island, warning people of danger and the need to leave the city on the island. Salo and his boyfriend had already arrived at the captains and were waiting for the others. The Lord decided that as many people as possible should leave Deleuze, since ordinary people cannot cope with the magician. However, there are those who are ready to stay and protect the island. Having run to the place, Eva first of all asked if everything was okay with the captain. She smiled and thanked the young people for their prompt arrival. She took out a box with letters and began to say that from now on the fate of the island depends on them. They must complete a task of paramount importance. They urgently need to go to the capital and deliver letters to Rashidel, the third knight of Kailanos. Evangelina and Gideon wanted to stay and defend the island. But this time, the captain's loud and stern voice, saying that there was no guarantee that anyone on the island would survive and be able to deliver the letter, 
made them understand the importance of the assignment. Night hunters and magicians will pursue them, and therefore the Lord ordered everyone to split into groups and set off from different sides of the pier. She strictly forbade breaking the seals from the envelopes, because only their presence could prove that the letters were really from her. Afterwards, she turned to her beloved ward in a soft voice and apologized for not being able to keep her word and hand her the sword. Eva hastened to reassure the woman, saying that it was nothing to worry about, and protecting the island was much more important now. The master took off the brooch and attached it to the girl's uniform. Yes, she cannot perform the initiation ceremony now, but this brooch is a sign that Evangelina has earned the recognition of the captain and became a knight. For the girl, everything happened as if in a dream. Meanwhile, the Lord took an oath and named Evangeline de Luce a knight, after which she knelt, accepting her new title. Giving her her hand, the woman asked her to become a real knight and save the world. Leaving the tower, Eve looked back one last time. Fiery rumblings were still visible above the castle. Salah reported that they had already left the southern and northern piers, and she and Jude were taking over the western one. In parting, she turned to her friend, telling her to be careful. The main character, holding back tears, said that everything would be fine, and they would definitely survive. The girls hugged and promised each other to see each other in the capital. The master was left alone. She watched as the boat set sail from the piers. And with all my heart, I hoped that these still very young warriors would deliver the letters and be able to stay alive. Now she was calm that people had left the island. Feeling the presence of the magician on her skin, she drew her sword and called him. He was not slow to appear when she called. Seeing a familiar face, she was surprised. The magician, without wasting time and taking advantage of the temporary confusion of his opponent, sharply thrust his sword. Ilosa bravely endured the pain of a deep wound without making a sound. Looking again at the familiar face, she wanted to address him by name. But he interrupted her and introduced himself with a new name, which sounded like Tail, the Dragon's Claw. Enjoying the state of the wounded woman, he said that he saw a future in which Enrique, the Eye of the Dragon, leaves the island with a sealed letter. But apparently, he was too late. Looking into the master's eyes, he interrogated her where she hid a piece of the dragon's soul. Realizing that he would not wait for an answer, he grabbed the already weakened woman and debated whether to kill her or spare her. Ilosa replied to kill her, because that's what demons always do. Having become even more furious, the dragon's claw struck the master with all its strength and pressed her head to the ground. Ruthlessly watching the already completely weakened Ilosa, he used all his strength and power. At that moment, the valiant woman was not afraid. She only remembered Eva and her mother. Day after day passed, but Renola still did not pay enough attention to her daughter, therefore, on another of these days. Ilosa frowned, and turning to the young mother, asked when she would finally name the girl. She cried and claimed that this was not her child, that her child had died. The master shook the woman, trying to bring her to her senses. She screamed loudly that on the day of her return to the island, Renola had made a promise to be a good mother. Seeing that everything was useless, she went up to the girl and took her in her arms. Lord Alos named her Evangeline Delus. Since then, Ava has become the most dear person to Ilosa, knighting her. She turned to Renola so that she would look at her child and be proud of her. The master always saw her mother as a brave and kind girl. They are incredibly similar. Dying, the master mentally turned to the knight Evangelina with a request to take care of Delos Island. On the way, Eva recalled the captain's instruction that no one in the capital should know the name of her real mother. The girl always felt kindness and support from the Lord and also had warm feelings towards her. And now, looking at the burning island, she asked the master to take care of himself. So they arrived in the city, and while the older knights were figuring out where to go next, Evangelina thought that she had hope of meeting Mikkel here. At that very moment, a man in a black cloak and a pulled hood walked past. The main character did not have time to look at the face, but she was sure that it was Mika. Looking at the retreating figure, she called out to the passerby, but he did not react and walked further and further. Then she rushed after him, shouting his name. She did not hear the call of her partner Gideon, who was excitedly watching her, not understanding what was happening. 
Realizing that the girl was not herself, Ava, the senior in rank, told the guy to run after Evangelina. When the heroine had almost caught up with the secret passerby, he deftly jumped onto the supporting wall. Eva, with difficulty overcoming the obstacle, found herself in an empty area where there was no one. She was sure it was Mick, but where did he go? Gideon, having finally caught up with the girl, began to ask what happened. It was the first time he had seen her in this state, and he was worried. He so wanted to support this fragile girl, but she still cried, unable to stop. She apologized for her outburst and said that due to her busy schedule, she was apparently hallucinating. Also, a concerned mentor came running, wanting to understand what it all meant. Then she fell, dropping her suitcases and everyone saw that she was attacked by a night hunter. Realizing that they were pursuing them from the island itself, the knights drew their swords and began to fight. The sun had not yet risen, so they were increasing in size at a breakneck speed. Standing back to back, the knights were not going to give up, but they understood that they had practically no chance to cope with such huge enemies. But then, as if from heaven, the Knight of Kailanos descended to them. With one swing of his sword, he defeated the night hunters. Looking at the young people he had just saved, he wondered who they were. The guys said that they were knights from Dulles Island. In turn, the arriving hero introduced himself as the head of the seventh detachment of the Kailanos Knights of the Kingdom of Kailan, wings of the sacred dragon, Peskel Vane. Kneeling before the senior in rank, the guests introduced themselves in turn, Gideon Dice and Holy Knight Evadelus. Evangelina had no idea that even Gideon were not ordinary knights, but at least sacred ones. Following the example of her elders, the heroine also knelt and stated her name and status, Knight of Deleuze Island, Evangelina Deleuze. Pascal clarified whether it was true that they had arrived in the capital in connection with the situation on the island, and said that they knew about the attack on Delus, and that the young knights had arrived on behalf of the commander-in-chief. Hearing that the capital was already aware of the events, the girls breathed a sigh of relief, because this meant that the others were also able to get to the city. Having heard their conversation, the knight of Kailanos confirmed that the inhabitants of the island had been met and were now safe. Having recovered a little from what had happened, Gideon, looking with admiration at the knight who saved them, asked if he was the wings of the dragon, which means that he probably moves the fastest. Eve also only now realized how lucky they were that sacred dragon wings personally helped them. But Wayne, shaking his head, replied that it was just the opposite. Thus, he greatly surprised the young knights. They asked how this was possible. Leaving their question unanswered, he began to say that he was here because of the magician who was somewhere nearby. Therefore, Pascal considered it right to quickly take the guests to a more protected place. He advised them to remain there until the knight in charge of the situation in Delos returned. Thanking him for his concern, Eve asked if he knew the magician who attacked the island. The knights of Kailanos had information about the five magicians, which he shared. Enrique, eyes of the demonic dragon. Asmodeus, Flame of the Demonic Dragon. Tylock, Demonic Dragon Claws. Vasilisa, Demonic Dragon Scale. Joachim, Wings of the Demonic Dragon. Most likely, Tylock, the Claws of the Demonic Dragon, is involved in the attack on the island. But the main problem is Asmodeus, the Flame of the Demonic Dragon. Asmodeus is considered the embodiment of the devil himself. He has the most unpredictable power. Other magicians move with Enrique, the eyes of the demonic dragon. Asmodeus appears alone. He is able to raise the continent to the ground. Moreover, he can even attack other magicians without hesitation. The knights listened and were in shock. They knew about the strength of the enemy, but this was the first time they had encountered so close. Gideon asked why the sacred dragon knights could not find the remaining two parts of the demonic soul. Pascal Vane, with regret in his voice, replied that it was not in their power to know whether they remained in the place where they were created. Eve thought out loud and suggested that this might be because of people who wanted to become magicians and found these particles. But the young man did not understand what could motivate such people. The knight joined the conversation and thoughtfully said that this is nothing more than a desire to become stronger. Such lust leads to the wrong choice. Evangeline understood that she needed to prevent all this before all the parts of the demonic dragon's soul came together. 
Pascal turned to his interlocutors and said that the letter from the master of Deleuze Island could be dangerous and offered to give the message to him. Without hesitation, Gideon took out the letter with the seal and handed it to the knight. But he did not take it, and as a senior, advised in future not to give it to anyone except Sir Rachidel, to whom it was intended, he told about the ability of Vasilisa, the scales of a demonic dragon, to take on the forms of others, and if now she were in front of them in the guise of a knight, there would be trouble. Yes, the guy didn't think about it and promised to be more prudent. Getting up to leave, he added that their task was to preserve and convey this letter, even at the cost of their lives. Today the knights have realized how naive and inexperienced they are. Elder Ava called her comrades to go to the training ground and practice so as not to waste time, but the main character sat deep in thought and did not hear what the mentor was saying. She jumped up sharply and ran after the knight, hoping to catch him on the street. With hope in her eyes, the girl asked if he knew Mikel de Luz, who arrived in the city to become a knight. To her chagrin, Pascal had never heard of such a thing. In an attempt to find at least some clue, she began to find out if perhaps he then knew Mr. Juilius, who took Mick away. The knight knew Vice Captain de Morgan, but unfortunately he is now listed as missing. The girl did not expect this at all, and asked how long he had been missing. It turned out about two years ago. The already shaky hope of finding his friend collapsed. Wayne said goodbye again and apologized for not being able to help. Ava Dalis, seeing her namesake standing alone, asked if everything was okay. Hearing that everything was fine, she asked the girl to buy bandages, since in the confusion she had forgotten about them. Evangeline happily agreed, saying that she was happy to be useful to the Holy Knight, to which she was embarrassed, and said that she was not trying to hide her rank. She just didn't have to. The main character expressed her admiration, because she cannot compare with the knights studying in the capital promising that she would quickly, only there and back, the girl ran to the pharmacy. Along the way, she thought about Mikkel again and again. There are so many people on the mainland, but where is he? How to find him? Unnoticed, she reached her destination. Just as she was about to enter, she again saw a passerby who looked like Mick in a black cloak and hood, just like that time. The heroine began to call him at the top of her voice, not paying attention to the people around. The man continued to move away without responding to the call. Suddenly he felt something, took off his hood and turned around. It really was Mikel de Luz. They settled down in a nearby cafe. It seemed they had so much to tell each other. Eva looked at the guy sitting in front of her and couldn't believe that they had met after all. She bombarded him with questions about what was happening, why he never responded to her numerous letters, and what happened to his companion. The guy remained calm indifferent and silent, which infuriated the heroine. Hitting the floor, he quietly and thoughtfully said that he knew nothing. The girl's rage knew no bounds. Looking at the one sitting opposite, the one who was always so dear to him, he extended his hand and carefully straightened her hair. At that moment, something familiar and dear appeared in his eyes. Feeling embarrassed, Eva continued to look at Mick. Her outburst of emotion subsided a little. And again, Mikkel silently and detachedly looked away and seemed like a stranger. Evangelina noticed that the guy was still wearing the bracelet that she had given him. After some silence, Mick began asking questions one after another, perplexing his interlocutor. He began by saying that he wanted to know how she ended up in the capital. Next, he was interested in who she came with, whether there was a boyfriend, or maybe she got married. Each subsequent question was more ridiculous. Unable to listen to this any longer, she jumped up and shouted in his face that she had gotten married and given birth to three children. In response, she heard congratulations and that he was happy for her. Eva thought she was going crazy, that this was even happening to Mika. Then Mikael said that he was on the run. The heroine expected anything but this. She couldn't comprehend how and why such a cheerful, kind, and decent person could be on the run. Without going into detail, he simply referred to a skirmish with other knights, and that is why he is avoiding them now. Evangelina was sincerely upset by this news. She thought that everything was fine with him. Mick returned to questions about Eve, asking again why she was here and whether it was true that she got married and had children. The girl laughed and admitted that she was joking. She was going to talk about the master's order, because of which she arrived in the capital and that the island was attacked by magicians. But thinking that he would worry, she decided to leave everything a secret for now. 
saying that she had sailed with a small task from the Lord. During the conversation, time flew by so quickly that it was already dark. The stars lit up in the sky, and Eva got ready to go back. Mikkel asked where she was staying and volunteered to accompany her. The girl said that they were almost there, and showed the house where she was temporarily staying. In parting, she admitted that she was glad to see each other, even if that was the case. It wasn't her words that Mick reciprocated. Seeing the response, the happy heroine suggested meeting again, to which she immediately received the answer that he would come to the same place that night. Dorothy's happiness knew no bounds. Left alone, Mikkel put on his hood again and walked back, when he accidentally collided with one of the knights. The young people looked at each other, and the knight said that he had confused the guy with a black magician. The main character was silent and did not seem to react without words. When I woke up, I was standing in the same place, covered in blood. The smell of blood. A dead knight lying on the ground. Everything indicated that he had killed a man again. Hearing footsteps and voices, Mick hurried to leave the crime scene. He hid around the bend and watched what was happening. Then he sat somewhere in a secluded corner. He looked at his bloody hands. More than anything, he was afraid that, having learned about his dark side, his beloved would decide that he was a monster. It is not known how much longer he would have sat like that. But then, out of his peripheral vision, he saw a knight's cloak developing. Turning around, he saw a girl passing by, and I decided to follow her. Eva, sitting in the room, recalled their chance meeting with Mikkel. She was torn by conflicting feelings. On the one hand, she was happy that her dream of seeing Mick had come true. But on the other hand, it seemed to her that this was not the same person. The expression on his face had changed. The energy emanating from him was completely different. There was a knock on the door. It was the teacher who had returned from the training ground. She said that the equipment there was excellent, so Eve and Gideon should also go there, especially since they had a special permit to visit, issued by Sir Pascal. The heroine agreed that it was a good idea to go work out. They all needed to be in shape now. Eva, making fun of the girl, said that she very wisely decided to kill two birds with one stone and practice and coo with Gideon, to which the second began to prove that they had friendly relations. It's already late and dark outside, so the older one advised the younger one to go hugging the guy. Taking out the letter, the Holy Knight wondered if everything was okay with their commander-in-chief. Then she remembered Vane's words, in which he spoke about Vasilisa's ability to copy other people and decided to hide the letter in her suitcase. There was a knock on the door. The girl opened it, deciding that it was Ava who had forgotten something and returned. Before she had time to realize anything, the unexpected guest shot her right in the stomach. Peering into the face, she saw Mikael. Evangelina trained hard, and the young man accompanying her, watching her, noted that after the girl became a knight, her posture changed which he told her about. Eve laughed and said that she had not yet become a holy knight. Gideon was confident that as soon as the opportunity arose, the knight would pass the exam and receive the title of saint. Suddenly, the heroine smelled burning. Looking out the window, they saw that the building in which they were temporarily accommodated was on fire. Rushing there, Eva prayed that everyone would be safe. By the time they arrived, the building was on fire and there was no way to enter. A knight approached them and ordered them to move away. He introduced himself as Derek, a knight of the Seventh Squad, and said that he had arrived to convey news about the master of Deleuze Island. Hearing about the captain, the heroine rushed to him, begging him to quickly tell him what happened. Lowering his head, the young man reported that the master had fallen in battle with a demonic claw. Evangelina could not believe this news. Not fully accepting this evil news, she heard the voice of Gideon, who wondered where their partner Eve was. He said that the sacred knight Eva was in the building, and she needed to be saved. But Derek became the messenger of another terrible news that the girl was killed by the flames of a demonic dragon. He missed it. The burning building began to collapse, and being there became more and more dangerous and also useless, because Eva was no longer alive. The knight of the 7th Division told them to go to the motel at the end of the street and catch their breath there. The main character remembered that Mikkel was supposed to come here. The blood froze in her veins at the mere thought that he too had suffered. She ran to the place where they agreed to meet. 
Her partner tried to stop her, but Derek advised her to leave the girl alone. She seemed to be in severe shock. Running around the corner where she and Mick had just recently parted, she saw him sitting on the ground, his head buried in his knees. He raised his head when he heard a familiar voice calling his name. Ava calmed down when she saw that Mikkel was not injured. In an alarming voice, she said that a fire was raging nearby and it was dangerous here. The guy rushed to her and hugged her tightly, saying that he was very scared. Evangelina could not understand what confused her more. Such uncharacteristic behavior for the always brave and fearless Mick, or the strong smell of blood that emanated from him. The girl said that the place where they stayed burned down because of the magician. She asked if he was hurt, and if he had seen this magician, who is considered the most dangerous. His name is Demonic Flame. To all her questions, he endlessly repeated only one thing that he didn't know, didn't know anything. Ava, not understanding anything, began loudly asking how it could be that he didn't see anything and didn't know anything, what he was doing then, all this time, to which he also quietly replied that he didn't remember anything. Unable to find out anything anymore, Evangelina said that tonight, the magician killed Eve, a knight who was sent on a business trip to their island. She recalled how the girl always helped her so that she could become a knight. She got up and said that she was very tired and should go to rest, asking if Mick could come here tomorrow afternoon, and having received his affirmative answer, she went to her room. Various thoughts came to her about her loved one, but she wanted to believe that someone who looks like Angel Mikkel cannot commit terrible acts. The young man wanted Eva to believe him, because he actually doesn't remember anything. We will find out in the next part whether loving hearts can be together, or whether they are destined to become opponents and fight against each other.